I've been really excited to make this video for a while now. Over the last couple of years, Buell Defense Systems has been making M14 parts for the commercial market. They started out making commercial M14 receivers for James River Armory. Buell Defense Systems is based out of Cleveland, Ohio. What started out as just making M14 receivers has turned into a company that's been making hammer forged parts such as hammer forged bolts, gas cylinders, barrels, operating rod guides, um, and other miscellaneous small parts. Aside from the traditional receiver, they've also come out with a couple of new receivers. Uh, one of them is the XM21 and the other one is the M21. Now, they, I'll show you the XM21 and their standard receiver. I don't have one of their M21 receivers with me right now. But they've also began to produce some uh, standard M14 receivers with rear lugs and half, mi half minute windage detents for the windage drum. Well, that's enough talk. I'm going to actually start showing you some of the parts that I have here with me. So here are all the parts that I currently have. They do make a few other parts, uh, small parts that I don't currently have uh, in my possession right now. And again, they do make another variant of the receiver. And we'll just start off with the standard M14 receiver. Um, this is basically made to, to mill spec as well, and uh, even so, much, so far as to put the, uh, the hole on the right side leg. Now, uh, and that was used in a different uh, machining technique in, uh, back in the old days, but it's on the military print, so they put it there anyway. LRB does the same thing. Okay, so I went ahead and I gauged this receiver at all the critical points, and everything checked in really good. Um, the bolt fit just fine. Here's one of their production bolts. Okay, again, this, these are all hammer. This is hammer forged. These are hammer forged. And in fact, the only thing that's cast are the trigger group housing, and they also offer a cast gas cylinder and a forged cylinder, but we'll, we'll get to those later. So basically got a forged bolt, okay, and uh, it fits in there just fine. And we'll go ahead and move on to the XM21 receiver. So with the popularity of being able to scope these M14s, they went ahead and just did away with the rear sights altogether, which I don't think is a bad idea, simply because of the fact that I have an M25 and it has never, I've never had a time where I use the rear sights. They're not even sighted in and I've got close to a thousand rounds through it. It shoots great, but I built it as a scope only rifle and that's the intent of this receiver is to go ahead, remove the rear sights and to make this a scoped only uh, precision rifle or maybe one that you want to do like a short range tactical one, but you want to throw on a holographic sight and you don't want to go through the trouble of getting an external Picatinny rail, you can just go ahead and put a red dot sight right on the top here and run a short barrel, maybe a 16 or a 18 inch barrel and you know do some three gunning with it or something like that. Uh, but again, these are made to the same specs as these, obviously minus the, minus the clip guide and the rear sights and obviously you don't need any side scope mounting um, facilities. Now they also do have a hybrid of these two receivers which is the M21. So this is the XM21 receiver. They do have an M21 receiver and it basically has the, um, it still has a, a rear sight pocket but it does away with the clip guide and you've got Picatinny rail sections. Uh, you have a, a solid Picatinny rail section that bolts on in the front and the back that goes from here. Um, so uh, other than that, I mean yeah, it's, it's, it's just a really good quality hammer forged M14 receiver and just another option for us uh, home M14 builders or for people who want one built uh, something a little different and again you've got uh, basically a, a mil spec uh, hammer forged bolt this is their latest one that's got a B2 lock code on it uh, these seem to be really good bolts I, um, I've got these both fitted to these receivers now and they pretty much went on like any other bolt that I'd fit to any other receiver. I haven't really seen anything wrong with them yet, but once I get them built, we'll try them out and we'll see how they do. I also did check um, on the receivers the, the, uh, the helix angles and they look good. And of course, they also make uh, new um, bolt guts. I've got a firing pin, um, hammer forged extractors, and your ejector and your extractor plunger. Okay. Now moving on, get this one. Let's get away from me. And moving on, now they actually offer a hammer-forged uh, GI gas cylinder assembly. 
RGI style gas cylinder or something, I guess you should say. Um, and these also, I, I don't think they make a standard piston. All their pistons, to the best of my knowledge, are actually black nitride. So these have the, you know, the 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 finish which is basically known as black nitride, tenifer, melanite, whatever you want to call it. So these that's that's how these have all been finished. I haven't seen one from Beulah that hasn't been finished like this. Um, I've been kind of prodding them a little bit here and there, sending them messages saying, hey, really would like to see a grooved piston version of this. So, hope you're listening. Moving on, we now have their cast gas cylinder assembly. Now, at first glance, it looks just like any old gas cylinder assembly, and you think that you couldn't tell a difference. But actually, this uh, the spindle valve is actually fake. This has no spindle valve whatsoever, but the spindle valve shape has been milled into there just to make it look authentic. So if you look on the other side, there is no spindle valve and there's no um, there's no roll pin, you, so you can't there's there's nothing to turn here. This is always fixed uh, in the open position, and you can't you, you can't turn the gas valve off. And and for most people, there really is no reason to do that anyway. So we'll see how these do as well. And moving on to the op rod. So these are new production hammer forged operating rods. Okay, they've been produced to GI spec. Now the GI spec didn't specify that it had to be a one or a two piece design. So this actually is a two piece design that was welded right here um, at the union, uh, I guess what you call the dog leg. So you have the shank and the dog leg. So it's been welded right here uh, to mill spec and finished. And I've actually been using one of these on my other LRB build my M25 that I just fired yesterday, and it seems to be working really good. It was really straight. The tab's nice and strong. Um, again, it it's, it's basically gauges as a new operating rod. It uh, Oh, the other feature that I really wanted to show you. One of the features I wanted to show you is, I noticed right here, one of the things that the first thing that I do for an operating rod to get it to fit right is I round off the, the corners right here so that it actually fits into the dismount notch on the receiver. Uh, the, every other one I've ever seen that was brand new had a, was perfectly square and it was a, a booger to just get it in and get it out. And uh, so what I ended up doing to make things easier is I just slightly stone off the corners. Well, he's already done that. These operating rods are already finished with the, with the slightly radius corner to assist in the ease of installation and removal of your operating rod. So moving on, we have their their version of a National Match spring guide, and pretty much it's just like any other spring guide. Uh, this one's basically round with two flats on the side. Okay, so some of them I know have uh, are more of an octagon shape or something like that, but this one is uh, is basically round. It's just it's only got two flats, and this one has a little bit of a different shape. Uh, for the uh, magazine, where the, for the front magazine engagement surface, um, I have I've been using one of these in my match rifles for a while. I, they work good. There's really uh, no difference in in function between this and any other uh, production operating rod guide that I've seen. Now moving on, we've got the uh, trigger housing. Now he does make most of the parts for the trigger housing at this current moment. I just haven't got the, the new parts. So their goal is to be able to make complete trigger housings. Um, but the time that I had this package sent to me, all that was available was the trigger housing, the trigger guard latch, and the, uh, the trigger pin, and the hammer pin. And as you can see from here, here's their uh, here's the other side. It's got the really nice Beulah logo on the side. Uh, again, I don't know if I said this before. So you've got your trigger pin and your hammer pin. They make those. They make the housing and they make the magazine latch. And to the best of my knowledge, this is a cast uh, housing. I don't know if they have plans to make a forged one in the future. I hope they do. Um, but either way, I've been using some cast housings that they've been working out pretty good so far. So there you go. Right now they're working on hammers, magazine latches, uh, safeties, basically, and triggers. So everything else you're going to need they'll be able to, to produce in a pretty short amount of time. They're, they're just about there. Now as far as the barrels go, they also do make a couple of different... They, this isn't, these aren't the only barrels that they make. So these are both medium weight um, chrome molly barrels. They're not chrome lined. They're not stainless steel. And this particular one here is a medium weight 22 inch barrel. And this is an actual 19 and a quarter inch barrel. 
Now what this 19 and a quarter inch barrel allows you to do, allows you to put your flash suppressor on but still be able to disassemble the gas system for servicing. Um, that's something at an 18 inch barrel, I guess, people have problems with that. With, with uh, If you have a traditional flash hider on there or a flash suppressor, you know, one here with the, with the bayonet lug, that, uh, that you can't really get the gas plug off with that in place. So this 19 and a quarter inch barrel gives you a little more velocity. Um, it's kind of like, kind of a nice happy medium between an 18 and a 22 inch, and it's got some pretty uh, good ease of servicing as well. Now they also make, I think they're working on a 16 inch barrel as well, and these also, I believe they also come in the standard weights as well. They don't make a heavyweight barrel, so they make standard weights and medium weights. Well, I'm sure some of you guys are wondering what a 19 and a quarter inch barrel looks like on an M14. So what I have here is uh, one of my LRBs with a 19 and a quarter inch barrel and a black feather chassis. Um, it seems to have some pretty decent accuracy on it. I haven't tested this one out very much. I've only shot maybe, I don't know, 30 to 50 rounds out of it um, just to get a feel for it. So I definitely have a lot more testing to do with this barrel. However, there was another build that I did for a customer and he had the same barrel put on an LRB with a Sage chassis. And so what I do have are some, uh, some targets here that I used um, for his build. So I've got here a couple of targets from that build that I did uh, with the 19 and a quarter inch Beulah barrel and a Sage chassis. So I got some pretty good groups. I didn't have a whole lot of time to play with it, but it was pretty decent accuracy enough for me to go ahead and ship it out the door. So right here um, on a one particular uh, group, I got uh, 1.1 inches, and this is all at 100 yards here. Uh, I got a 1.3 inch group here, a 1.2 inch group, 1.499. Uh, a couple of 1.9 inch groups and it, you know again with just uh, with some more uh, playing around with some load development I'm sure you could definitely dial it in better so I'm pretty happy with the, the overall accuracy of this and again if you spend more time with load development you can tighten it up too so um, again the 19 and a quarter inch barrels seem to have pretty decent uh, you know pretty decent accuracy um, I'd definitely be happy with it especially being a short barreled a shorter barrel more of a utility uh, function. I, I think it's uh, it would definitely fit that bill. Well, that about wraps up this video for now. Uh, this particular video was simply a introduction for everybody to get to know Beulah Defense Systems and what kind of products they make. Now again, I'm in communications with Jeff at Beulah Defense on a pretty regular basis, uh, either on the phone or via email. And we spent a lot of time talking about what his hopes and visions are for the future of Buell Defense and his parts. And basically he told me the one thing that really rung out to me was that uh, his objective is to be able to allow people who want to build their own M14 to be able to buy an entire kit uh, minus the sights and chassis for about $1,500. So that would be everything that you would need um, to, to build. To build your own and I thought that was an absolutely fantastic concept and he's doing his best that he can to keep the prices down and to keep the parts coming now he's still working on his distribution channels um, and right now pretty much the only way to get them is if you go on the M14 forum and go to the PX there or if you call him directly or email now um, he sent me a nice little brochure here with some parts and he left uh, basically an email sales at beulahdefense.com or you can visit their website beulahdefense.com now as far as rifles they'll be offering rifles I'm not exactly sure if they're going to be doing it through James River or just directly from their store uh, but pretty much the rifles are going to be offering are going to be um, they're going to be some offering some some rifles with Sage chassis and some with the Archangel stock I don't think they're going to be doing any traditional wood stocks but they'll probably be doing something with AG composites as well um, but I might have the facts a little mixed up on that one but again I think personally it's uh, for me the biggest thing that really got me was uh, being able to bring out brand new quality production parts at an affordable price because uh, getting to build an M14 can be quite expensive with GI parts drying up and then the questionable quality of the aftermarket parts, or are they come from China, are they come from Taiwan, or are they are they, uh, they cast or are they forged? 
So, um, and again, it's one of those things where competition brings down prices, and I think uh, he's definitely uh, become a competitor now, and he's brought the prices down for people. And I think the you know the people you know the the customers definitely win on that on on, on that viewpoint. Again, to sum up exactly what parts they're going to be making. Uh, in talking to Jeff, and it's November 27th right now, and the last time I talked to him was maybe a couple of weeks ago, and he was basically saying that they make all the parts in-house to produce a Beulah XM21 that's ready to drop into a Sage chassis. So the XM21 has no rear sights, so they will not be producing rear sights, at least at the, the last time I talked to him. Anything can change if the business booms, I suppose, and they're not making muzzle devices. And also the Sage chassis does not require a front band, so they're not making front bands either. But everything else they're making. So your your receiver, your bolt, your trigger group, your operating rod, your gas cylinder, um, all those parts they'll go ahead and be producing. And the only thing you have to provide is your own stock, muzzle device, and sights. So, so that basically concludes this video. Again, this video was basically just a summary and an introduction to for everybody to get to know who Beulah Defense is and what they're going to be producing. But the next video that I'll be producing that has anything to do with Beulah will probably be the one where I put together uh, their, one of the receivers. Basically, I'm going to do a full Beulah build, and I'll let you all know how that goes, uh, complete with some range reports. So thanks for watching, and keep me in the X-Ray.